you very much. And the other way around. Uh, so indeed, my name is Eric. I'm officially a software engineer, but really I'm a geek. I like to play with technology, sometimes to do useful things, sometimes to do a bit less useful things. Uh, I don't feel like a dinosaur, but I've been around for a while. Um, and so I've used quite a few different systems over the years. I am not, however, an embedded systems engineer or an electrical engineer. And in fact, I discovered uh, the embedded world only a few months ago uh, when, back in April, Apple published a blog post on Swift.org uh, pointing to the GitHub repo with the embedded Swift examples. And so this talk is about my journey with Embedded Swift over the last few months with its ups and downs. So let's first uh, take a look at Embedded and some of its limitations. And for that, I want to compare uh, a small embedded uh, chip. This is uh, an RF chip that's used, for instance, in the Apple TV Siri remote control. And we compare that with an Apple Watch Series Zero. So the original one released nearly 10 years ago. In terms of processor, we're looking at a single core 32-bit versus 64, not a big deal. Clock speed, we're talking 64 megahertz versus 520 megahertz. So we already see that there is an eight times uh, speed difference between the two. Memory, we are talking 256 kilobytes versus 512 megabytes. So that's a 2000X. And in flash, one megabyte versus eight gigabytes, so it's 8000X. So we see that if you want to bring Swift into the embedded world, we really need to do something. Reduce everything that's overhead at runtime, the memory footprint, and the code size. And so embedded Swift is Apple's official answer to this. And it is basically Swift, but with limitations. So it's a, a subset, not the dialect. And the way it does it is that it adds a compilation mode that adds some constraints in order to achieve the reduction goal that we mentioned. How does it do it? Well, it removes basically everything that's dynamic. Uh, so no dynamic reflection, no existential types, no generic instantiation at runtime, and of course, no interoperability with Objective-C, which requires a runtime. So with that, we got a minimal runtime library, which is mainly concerned about manage uh, memory management. Uh, we don't need to include uh, metadata about the types, so no runtime, no metadata required. It also uses a reduced Swift standard library. So for instance, Codable is not available. And it does aggressive dead code stripping, so only bundling really the code that is required for execution. In practice, it's a few compiler flags. You need to define the target for which you're compiling. You need to enable the embedded mode, which is still experimental uh, to this day. And you need to do a whole module optimization for the dead code stripping. And so the embedded switch manual indeed says that it's a compilation mode uh, where we produce an object file, much like another uh, compiler like C compiler would do, and that it needs to be linked with the rest of the code. Uh, and the linking is not done by the Swift compiler, it's done by the tool chain of your target environment. And the user manual goes on to explain the different steps required for embedded development. And we can see that uh, Swift is only a small part of that, all that's required. So there's a compilation, and then using the output of that compilation um, for the linking. OK, uh, let's switch gear a, a little bit and see how uh, if you want to start embedded development, you could do it. So the first thing I would do is install the development uh, toolkit for the board that you're targeting. And don't think about Swift. Just install that and test that it works. And uh, in embedded world, the hello world is blinking an LED. Uh, this is the board I'm using. So it's an NRF52840 developer kit. So you have buttons and LEDs and all stuff to play around. And their uh, SDK is, comes as an extension for VS Code. And so you can stay within VS Code, have completion, and uh, have a UI to trigger the build and debug and all kind of stuff. And so you test that it works. Next step, go to Embedded Swift and look at the example that Apple provides. In the example repository, you have quite a few different um, examples depending on the uh, boards that you're using. So you will have stuff for ESP32, for uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, Pico, 
for uh, NRF in this case, which is what I'm using. And so if you look at the readme, the first thing it says is you need to make sure to use a nightly toolchain of uh, Swift. And that is still the case even with Xcode 16. So I would highly recommend to do that. And so you look at the, the readme and you execute, uh, sorry, you go to the website, you download uh, the latest snapshot. So you look at the readme and you execute all the commands that are required to test the example. The main one being make sure that you use the toolchain that you just downloaded. But I don't know about you, but typing these kind of commands in a terminal to develop something, that's not what I want to do. And so the next step that I did was try to set up a proper environment for the development. And so needs to, there are a few tricks, but I managed to uh, have uh, VS Code with the normal NRF Connect SDK tools and the Swift uh, extension. And I have a blog post explaining how you can do that. And with that, I could, with one button, trigger a build, package everything, flash it to the board, connect to the board, and I can see on the console some debug logs. So that was, for me, a good starting point to go further. And so going further, you start with the examples provided by Apple. Again, let's take a closer look. For instance, this is the, 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 the blinking LED. And so you see it looks like normal Swift code, except there is this GPIO pin configure DT and LED zero. So where is this coming from? That's coming from the bridging header uh, .h. This is a standard C header file. Uh, it's used by the Swift compiler to uh, the Swift C interrupt to basically make available uh, in the Swift world the C construct. And so there are some includes for the SDK that is used here. And there is the LED0 that's declared as a static variable, which is a structure representing basically the pin to which the LED is connected. But this doesn't look very Swifty. It's just Swift as glue code to C. That's not what we want. So let's try to fix that. And we'll create a struct, a struct sorry, that will encapsulate the C calls. And we want to make it reusable, so we pass uh, the pin to which the LED is connected. And in C, that's the pointer to a struct. And so in Swift, we need to use unsafe pointer. So that might be a bit less uh, known to people doing regular iOS development. You don't use that every day. And there are a full uh, suite of unsafe something. Uh, it's documented in Swift's uh, C interrupt uh, documentation from Apple, so that's not really a big deal. And with that, our main function uh, looks a bit more Swift. But if you look in the SDK, they say that you're not supposed to use a pin before you have checked that the GPIO is ready. So we want to hand handle that case, and we create an error, and we make the initializer throwing. And it doesn't build. Uh, but the Swiss compiler gives a pretty useful error, and uh, the issue is that throws is the same as throws any error. Any is an existential. Existentials are not supported by embedded Swift. But it's easily fixed with a feature that was introduced in Swift 6, which is type throws. And so you just add the type in the throws uh, clause, and that works fine. But until now, I just ignored the, the uh, error that was thrown. And so now I want to catch it and print something to the console so that I know at least that something went wrong. And it fails again. But this time, it's not the Swift compiler telling me what to do. It's the linker that is nicely telling me error code 1. OK? Uh, so this got me into a rabbit hole where I was trying to understand all the build system. It's not. Uh, SPM or Xcode, so it's a completely different build system. I wanted to pass uh, some arguments to get some more information, and then I went into trying to understand compilers and linker and linker script, and I was puzzled, and I didn't find anything. Um, and then someday I looked at the repo again, and there was a commit by an Apple engineer that says, fix incompatible PIC setting. PIC stands for position independent code. Uh, and with that, the code worked, and I have a, a nice blinking LED. Yay! Uh, to be honest, I have no idea if it would have taken me a week, a month, six months, or never to find that issue. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Apple. Uh, but that's just an LED, so I want to have a button, and I want to have all kind of stuff. And so you just keep going at it. 
you hit some issues, you try to, f to work around it, uh, and eventually you got some code that looks like Swift, where you can inst instantiate a class, you can have a button, which is generic, because you can have generic at runtime, but generic specialization at compile time works okay, and you have a trailing closure to do the handler when you push the button. So to me, that's the kind of level that I would like to program with embedded Swift. So in summary, if you want to go that route, which is really fun, I would say start by, well, picking a, a board that you want to work with, install their tool chain, make their example work, then go to the swift.org website, download the Swift tool chain, uh, start from the example of Apple, and grow your code from there. Um, you will certainly need to learn a few more things, like uh, the SDK that of the board you're targeting, you will need to read some C code and understand some concept about embedded development. Uh, I was a bit stubborn and I wanted to discover by myself, but use the Swift forums, use the community, go to GitHub. There are plenty of things out there. And uh, things will improve. Embedded Swift is still very early development, I think. And uh, there is a useful link uh, on the Apple website with the status of what's currently in or not. So I have uh, a few articles on the blog post, uh, on the blog, sorry, with uh, talking about embedded Swift. I will um, post also a few example code in, in GitHub, and I will continue to write there. And uh, you can contact me if you want to talk about uh, that. Thank you very much for attending the last <laughs> session. Oh, this one's near and dear to my heart. Oh, I love these little systems. Have, do you have any sense of how small it can go? I mean, if I want to go to a 8266 or maybe an 18 mega, I mean, can it go? On? Yes, I've seen uh, a few uh, a few posts about uh, a few kilobytes of code, mm -hmm. so three or four. The um, the ATI tiny is not yet supported, uh, okay. more because of the instruction sets than the code size. Uh, but yeah, that's the goal that it should go down to eight bits, really low power stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about um, have have you gotten a sense of the overhead? I mean, sometimes it's hard to get C code to fit on these little tiny things. Are, are you so paying a big penalty or not much? No, not much. Uh, I think you you can get to sizes that are pretty pretty comparable to what you go uh, get from C. Awesome. Uh, we ask, can we use a uh, Swift embedded in uh, in an iOS app? And uh, can the limit of this approach can improve the performance of our app? So the the goal of Apple is indeed to use embedded Swift in more than embedded devices. So, but they are mainly targeting firm, uh, firmware, uh, bootloaders, uh, kernel code, etc. Um, the as I said it's a subset, and so you can compile with embedded mode on a Mac. I've never tried on an, uh, an, Apple, an iOS, an iPhone, or an iPad, or anything. But you can compile code to, the, to your Mac host uh, uh, with embedded. Have you, I don't know if you've seen how hard or how complex it is to, to onboard some new platform. Um, if you had some chip that nobody else is taking care of, is that a huge project or something you could take, in, take on? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty pretty big. <laughs> and, and, yeah, uh, there is, for instance, the uh, in the ASP32, uh, uh, there are two main categories: the C, which is using um, an, um, a RISC-V chip, which is mm -hmm. supported, and the S series, which is using Extensa Core, and it's not supported. Mm -hmm. And I've read a few people trying to get there, and it seems to be quite a, a lot. quite a long yeah quite a trip. Uh, for the people that are building stuff at home, uh, they are asking, do you have a chip to recommend to start using? Um, so in the uh, examples, um, it's, it, it's a bit of a happenstance that I'm using the NRF chip. I think the ASP32C series, so the C6 uh, in particular, is quite uh, supported. The Raspberry also. The uh, Pico, so yes? The Pico, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. because Raspberry is not an embedded. A Raspberry Pi is right, not embedded. Right, it's right, a computer. Right. <laughs> uh, it's a small one, but it's a computer. Yes. Wonderful. Th that's, I'm so excited to see uh, Swift branching out like this. Thanks for pioneering for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.